Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to St. James Baptist Church Eastlake. We are excited about the fact that you came to join us today. We know God is going to move in such a powerful way today that I want you to make sure that in advance you go ahead and show some love. It is love time. So make sure you click under someone's name where it says reply and just simply tell somebody I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. That's it. Click under their name where it says reply and just say, I love you, and there is nothing you can do about it. As you're showing love, I want you to come in and let us know where you're watching us from, what city, what state. If you're watching from your home, if you're watching from work, we're just grateful that you are here today. As you are coming in, make sure you remember, sharing is caring. Say it with me, boys and girls, sharing is caring. We want you to make sure that you share. Start a watch party right now. Let somebody know that God is going to do something on their behalf today. We don't want anybody that you're connected to to miss this moment. So make sure you click the share button right now. Click it once, click it twice. Make sure you click it just to be nice. Make sure that you click the share button so that everybody can get it. I need more shares. Y'all haven't done it yet. Come on, I'm waiting on you. Ma'am, sir, I'm waiting on you. We're gonna wait. Stop the music, we're gonna wait. No, I'm joking. Let's share right now so that we can get to what God has in store for us. We're praying for everyone who has uh, been standing in the need of prayer. For those who have lost loved ones this week, we have seen uh, so many deaths and so many things that have happened that we're praying for every person who has lost a loved one. We're praying for everyone who's going through sickness. We have some witnesses that's watching right now that knows that God is a comforter and knows that God is a healer. So we do want you to make sure that, you know, we are standing with you, praying for you, even in such a time as this. Won't you bow your heads even now as Minister Gwendolyn Hazel leads us to God's throne of grace? Good morning, saints. It is now prayer time. If you bow your heads and pray with me. Our Father, sweet Jesus, Lord God Almighty, 
We're calling on you this morning. We're calling on your name. We're speaking it into the atmosphere. We ask that your presence be felt all over this place. We ask right now, God, that you will continue to be with us, to lead and guide us. We thank you so much, God, because you've been so good to us. We ask you right now for everyone that has a heavy heart, a bow down head, feelings of depression and stress, we are asking God that you will speak peace and comfort, that you will lift the bow down head. We ask you, God, for the ones that are sick. We speak healing in the name of Jesus, for we know that you have the last word. And for the ones that are bereaved right now, God, loss of a loved one is weighing heavy on their hearts. We are asking you, God, to come into their room and speak peace in the name of Jesus, that you will give them comfort. We ask, God, that you'll put your loving arms around right now and lift them up, hold them high up in your hands, God, and let them know that you are the answer and that you do hear and answer and hear every one of their cries and their pleas with you, God. We ask you to continue to be an ever-present company keeper for the ones that are lonely, that are low in spirit. We're asking that your comfort right now, God, feel right now like never before. We are asking God for everything that holds us back and keep us stagnant, that you will move in a mighty way, that we will step into our power. We are asking God that you will continue to be by our sides and lead in God, and then God, your will be done in our lives. Where you say go, we'll go. When you say stay, we'll stay. We'll stand up in you, God. We ask for our nation, God, that you will continue to heal our land. We're asking you, God, right now that you will turn these situations around. Things that we don't understand, God, when we call on you, you will make it clear and we'll understand it better. Every day we'll understand it as we get closer and closer to you, God. We ask you right now for our church family that you will take care of us, that you'll put your loving arms around us and hold us together so close that one can't fall without the other and we'll rise up and praise you together. We ask you right now, God, for our pastor that you will continue to give him words of wisdom and fresh anointing so he'll pass it on to us and when we receive your word, God, we'll be better and we'll do better. We ask you right now just to be with us. Continue to lead and guide right now in the name of Jesus. And we'll be careful to give your name all praise and honor and glory. That's your name is so much due. We'll continue to lift you higher and higher, God, as you continue to feed us. Feed us, God, so we won't want no more. Continue to provide for us, for you are such a provider. You take care of us and we say thank you. God, we are so pleased just to have the privilege to call on your name this morning. And we say thank you, hallelujah, and blessings be to everyone, God. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. We're excited about this. This is our conclusion of the series, The New Abnormal. This is our last message in this series. We hope that it has been a blessing. Uh, but I, I want to make sure that if you have not done so already, that you you click share right now. While while you got a minute, click share, grab your Bible, grab your smart device, whatever you're going to need to look up your scripture, uh, because I'm believing that God is going to give us a word on today. If you would, please. Uh, turn with me to the book of Acts. Would you please turn with me to the book of Acts? Acts chapter 16. We're going to reference verses 1 through, uh, we're going to reference verses 1 through 25, but for your reading, for your hearing, I just want to use 
one scripture that is verse 25. So Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Won't you say amen once you have it? Amen. Acts chapter 16, verse 25 simply says these words. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. I, I want to use for a subject today. The gospel, according to Dr. Seuss, the gospel, according to Dr. Seuss. I just got a simple question today. Is there anybody that's watching that's got a reason to praise God? No, y'all didn't respond quick enough. I said, is there anybody that's watching right now who's got a reason to praise God? I wonder, do I have five witnesses? I wonder, can I get six witnesses? I wonder, can I get 10 witnesses that can say I'm a witness? That I got a reason. Praise. I wonder if I can get 20 people that can say I I got a reason. Can you can we have testimony service online? Can can you type? I got a reason to praise God. I, I got some I got some things I can praise God for. Don't take much to to get me to have a flashback. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, I got a reason to praise God. I'm I'm wondering, is there anybody that's ever been sick and God healed you? You say, I got a reason yeah, to praise God. I wonder, is there anybody that's ever had some bills due and God made a way out of no way that can say, I got a reason to praise God. I wonder, is there anybody that's ever been unemployed that, that can say, now I got a job and I've got a reason to praise God. I wonder, is there anybody whose child came home? That's enough in itself that your child made it home. Can you say, I got a reason, preacher, to, to praise the Lord? And it don't take much but a flashback to just simply reflect on how good God has been to me, even in the midst of a pandemic. And unfortunately, I want to encourage somebody because there are many people who started off this pandemic saying, I can't wait till I get back in the church house because I'm going to tear the church up. I'm I'm going to praise God like I'm crazy when I get back in the church. But 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 if you have been waiting for six months to praise God, You've been waiting 182 days to to give God glory. You are 182 days past due. If if you've been waiting six months to to glorify God for keeping you, for making a way for you, for doing some things on your behalf, then you owe God even right now. If you've been waiting on the right time and the right place to praise God, then you have uh, you have unfortunately been making withdrawals of blessing without making deposits of praise. Yeah, you, 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 you've been the benefactor of God's goodness and his glory without putting anything back in. And shame on us for, for those who have been waiting uh, to get back into the house of God in order to praise the God of the house. But there's somebody who's watching who knows, here it is, I used to... Wait until I got to the church house to praise him. But what I found out is there are times when you can't get to the house and you have learned in the midst of this pandemic that I got to praise God no matter where I am. I got to praise God in the midst of what I'm going through and praise him sometimes in your house and praise him sometimes on your job. And you had to pull over the car and praise God in the midst of your car. Anybody a witness that that has changed your perspective. And so here it is for, for those of us who are waiting on a special time, place, time and place to praise God. That is going to be the new abnormal, because some of us have learned to bless the Lord at all times. Yes, his praise 
shall continually be in my. I feel like preaching today. So 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 it is that, that many times all of us who who have been in a church or in uh, the presence of God at any given point have been in a place where God has been so good to you that you had the can't help it. You, you know, you, you didn't think you, you, you didn't think you were going to give God glory. You, you didn't think you were going to do nothing. But but all you had to do was think about how good God been to you in your hands automatically went up because you couldn't help it. You, you you start thinking about how many times God made a way out of no way. And, and, and you, you started humming and you started rocking and, and shaking. You you ever had the can't help it. You you didn't plan on praising them. It just kind of happened. It, you couldn't you couldn't help it. And 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 uh, and sometimes Jeremiah said it's just like fire shut up in my bones. I, I tried to stop it, but I just couldn't help it. Gets gets all in my hands and and gets all in my feet every now and then you, you got to learn that in order to get through some things, we got to praise our way through. But as we have discovered uh, in the midst of this pandemic, if I'm going to navigate through what I'm going through and if I'm going to get to a place where I've learned how to praise God in the place that I am, I don't wait on where on when I get to a certain place, but I'm going to bless God where he blesses me. Is there anybody that can testify? I, I've learned how to bless God where he blesses me. And if we're going to be honest about it, what, what this pandemic has taught many of us is to be prepared for anything. Many times we, 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 we look back over these last six months and one thing that we've learned is to be prepared for anything. You never know where God is going to lead you and what God is going to take you through, allow you to go through. Some things are God sent and some things are God allowed. As we uh, in, in investigate Acts chapter 16, Acts chapter 16 talks about the fact that as Paul and Silas and, and those who are walking with him are going through doing what God has for them to do, they encounter a whole bunch of things along the way. Uh, every day, it seems like it was something different. It says as Paul and Silas and, the, and those who are following them are going through and they're they're going through a derby and Lystra. Uh, they, they run into a disciple named Timotheus and Timotheus has a mother who is a Jew and a father who is Greek. Timotheus is a disciple and his mother is Jewish and his father is Greek. And so the dynamic is Paul and Silas find themselves uh, encountering Timotheus and because of the way the system is set up, they had to perform a circumcision on Timotheus because his father was Greek. In other words, uh, uh, the circumcision, which is supposed to take place when he was a baby, uh, now as a grown man has to be performed even though he's grown. Yeah. And what you will find out is there are sometimes that God will put you in the path of people where you will have to solve a problem that should have been fixed at childhood. Who am I talking to today? God will allow you to encounter people and you will have to deal with some issues that should have been handled when they were a child. That there's some issues that that some people are carrying around. Here it is that we be honest. They are childhood issues. But you got to deal with it as an adult. There, there's some people that God's going to allow you to encounter along the way. They're, they're the people that you meet while you're walking down the street. They're the people that you meet each day. There, there's some people who got some childish stuff that never got dealt with. And, and God puts you in the place because you got to be prepared for anything. And and as they go from from Derby and Lystra, they, they go, uh, they keep walking. And as they keep walking, here it is. It says they go to uh, Phrygia and through the coast of Galatia. And it says as they're going through uh, Phrygia and through the coast of Galatia, it says that the Holy Spirit tells them don't preach. Uh, as they're going through that region, uh, it says the Holy Spirit tells them, you, you don't 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 preach the gospel. Here it is in Asia, because there are some places that will not receive 
any good news. He says there you got to be under, you got to be able to understand and be led by the spirit. Watch this. That there's going to be sometimes when you ain't got to say nothing. I wish that's a whole word for somebody right here. Is, is there sometimes where the spirit will tell you just hold your peace? There, there's sometimes where the spirit will tell you it ain't even worth your time, breath or energy. Some sometimes God will allow you to see. There are some areas that won't receive you no matter what you do, no matter what you say. And the spirit says, here it is. Don't, don't, don't say nothing. This one don't don't say nothing. But 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 as they continue their journey, they go from Galatia to Troas. And as they camp out in Troas, it says that Paul has a vision and there's a vision and the man in the vision is telling them here it is. Come to Macedonia because we need you to help us. And the Bible says that Paul uh, perceived that it was the Lord sending them to give a word to those people. Here it is. One area couldn't receive what God had for them. While on the other hand, God had prepared another place. Here it is. So that they were waiting for They were hungry for what God was going to do. Can I suggest to somebody that while you are waiting on somebody over here to receive what God has for them, understand God is preparing somebody else. That, that needs to hear what God has for them. There, there's somebody here it is who needs you, who who is waiting on your word. I say all the time that there are some people who will never step foot in the church, but they will listen to what you got to say. There are some people who may never listen to the preacher, never listen to the pastor. But God will put a word in you that they can receive. Watch this. Just because it came from you, you ought to praise God that God has been preparing you during this pandemic. God has been preparing you for anything. I know you didn't think you were qualified, but God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. God knew you before you even became you. And God's going to send you to some people who need to hear that God is still able to do anything but fail as they continue their journey. They they go from uh, Macedonia and then as they go on the outskirts of Macedonia, they go to Thyatira and they encounter a woman by the name of Lydia. Lydia uh, got paper. She 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 got the bag. She 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 is a seller of purple and she is there taking in everything Paul and Silas have to say. She is listening to the word of God and she is intrigued by what God is able to do through these people of God. And as Lydia. Lydia is listening. She says she wants to be baptized and her whole family. Y'all miss it. Here it is again. God is going to put you in the company of some people who can support you even in the midst of what you're going through. God is going to connect you to some people who are able to watch this to finance what God has called you to do. In other words, God has given you the vision and God is going to send you some people who can give provision. I wish I could help five people that know that God is going to fund your dreams. God is going to fund your goals. God is going to send you some people who are able to be a blessing because you did what God told you to do. Somebody else said, I got to be prepared for anything. You never know why God sends you around certain people, why God blesses you around people. God gives you favor among people you don't even know just because you are faithful to what God told you to do. But in the midst of being prepared for anything, you also have to know that problems will arise at any time. As they have gone from baptizing Lydia and her whole house. The Bible says as they're going into the city. It says then there's this damsel who uh, has a spirit of divination and she has brought her masters much money from the spirit that she possesses. And as she sees Paul and Silas going to prayer, she begins to uh, to hassle them. And isn't it amazing that is when I'm trying just to get to the house of God, when I'm trying to just get in the presence of God, it seems like that's when the devil comes and tries to intersect. It, it seems as the moment that I choose to try to listen to the voice of God and and talk to God. It seems like that's when the devil comes in and tries to deflect me. But listen to this. You have to learn that problems will arise at any time. And you got to be mindful 
to minimize interaction with people who are distractions. Oh, I'm I'm preaching good today. I say you had to learn to minimize your interaction with distractions. There are some things that you've got to be sure of that are simply distractions. There, there, there are some people who are not worth the time or energy. They are simply a distraction. They they are trying to prevent you from getting to where God wants you to be. They're trying to prevent you from getting what God has for you. And you got to learn why says don't allow your their aggravation, their agitation to bring you aggravation. You, you got to be careful that their agitation doesn't yield aggravation. It says that the Bible says that she does this for many days. They're going to church and on their way to church says this this girl is harassing them and and shouting, look at these men of the most high God. And, and, and we live in a day and time where th there's a lot of aggravation going on. There's a lot of agitation going on. And there's a lot of people who are coming against uh, the people of God. And you got to be careful that you don't lock in to their, 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 their distractions because that's all it is, is a distraction. You got to minimize your interaction with distractions. See, she, she gets to the point where Paul being grieved in the spirit turns and speaks to the spirit. Listen to this, because at some point you got to recognize that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. And watch this. And Paul speaks to the spirit and tells the spirit to come out of her. Because there's some things that you got to speak truth to. There's some things that you cannot ignore. Sometimes why says you got to get to the place where I speak to the spirit that's coming against me and understand that when you speak to the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, watch this. The spirit can't stay in the same place of Jesus. And and immediately the spirit comes out of her. And the Bible says that when her masters found out that. What they were using to make money is no longer available when it is that they figure out that that, that their that their gold mine is no longer in in intact. When, when they recognize that what they were leaning and depending on is no more, no longer available. Listen to what it says. It says and they got together and and and, uh, and, and they falsely accused Paul and Silas. Yes, they, they, they falsely accused Paul and Silas and and uh, they, they get the magistrates, uh, the magistrates to uh, to make sure that they beat them severely and and to uh, make sure that they are tied and make sure that they're bound and make sure that they are thrown in prison. Yeah, because sometimes you got to recognize that problems can arise at any time o on your way to church. And you find yourselves, here it is, in the hands of the law. And, uh, and, and the Bible says, uh, and uh, as they are tied and as they are flogged and as they are beaten, uh, it says, and at midnight. Y'all reading the text now. We, we in verse 25 and I'm ready to roll. And at midnight. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God because when you are prepared for anything and you recognize problems will arise at any time, you ought to be able to pray and praise anywhere. Yeah, you, you ought to be able to pray and praise anywhere. I, I'm believing uh, as I look inside uh, this jail as Paul and Silas go from trying to get to the church house to being locked in the big house. They, 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 they've gone from trying to get in the presence of God to now they are in a place where there is darkness. And uh, the Bible says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises. They, 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 they watch this. They, they, they will refuse their one phone call. But but the worst thing that the jailers did, they they made sure their hands were bound, made sure that their feet were bound. But the one thing they forgot was to close their mouth. And the worst thing you can do for a believer is let me call on the name of the Lord. Is there anybody that's a witness that every time you go through some problems in your life, you learn how to have a little talk with Jesus. I wish I could get some witnesses in here because Paul and Silas did 
what they were on their way to do in the first place. Y'all miss it. Here it is again. Remember, they were on their house on the way to the house of God for the hour of prayer. And on their way to pray, they were met with the distraction and got into some interactions, which, lo which left them. Here it is inside the prison. But while they are inside the prison, it didn't stop my prayer. I'm going to say it again. While they are in the prison, it didn't stop me from praying. And there's somebody who's watching right now that you ought to be a witness that no matter where you find yourself, you can't stop praying. You, you can pray no matter what situation you find yourself in, no matter how dark the situation may be. You can still call on the name of the Lord and the Lord will hear you. Is there anybody that can praise God right now that I still am able to call on the Lord and the Lord will hear me? Yeah, it, it says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, saying praises unto God. Why do Paul and Silas praise God? Paul and Silas, if you would help me uh, just look inside this jail cell, I'm I'm convinced that there there are there are two reasons that Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises. The reason, number one, that I believe if this is 2020, can we keep it real? The reason Paul and Silas could praise God is because they still lived even in the hands of the law. Oh, y'all missed it. Here it is again. Uh, I, I'm, I'm believing by faith that Paul and Silas, one of the reasons they could praise God is because they still lived even in the hands of the law. Because y'all know it could have been the other way. At least they were able to go to jail. Uh, they, they may have been beaten, but at least they weren't shot. Uh, at, at least, even though they were falsely accused, at least they stood a chance of being free. And you ought to praise God. There's somebody who's watching that you ought to praise God that, that you have had some encounters with the law and you still lived. You ought to praise God that your children had some encounters with the law and they still live. The reason you ought to praise them is because, you know, it could have been the other way. But the other reason they praise God. Is because they learned you cannot leave out the Lord. Paul and Silas prayed. And saying praises, here it is, and the prisoners heard them because they learned that you got to know how to praise God anywhere. Uh, and, and to bring this 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 home, uh, 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 I'm reminded of a childhood uh, book and uh, and a series of books. And th there's a childhood author by the name of Dr. Seuss. Yeah, D Dr. Seuss. Who, who is named, uh, who, who has written many children's books, who, who is responsible for writing many children's books, who, whose most famous, uh, his most famous character is the cat in the hat. And the hat on the cat had stripes. Uh, I'll come back to that later. Uh, but, but there's a book that Dr. Seuss wrote as a bet that he can write it with only using 50 words. And that book, the name of that book is Green Eggs and Ham. Yeah, uh, y'all might have read the book. Y'all might know wh what I'm talking about. And in, in the book, Green Eggs and Ham, there's a fellow by the name of Sam. He says, I am Sam. Sam, I am. And Sam asks the character, he says, would you eat green eggs and ham? He said, I, I would not eat green eggs and ham. I do not like you, Sam. I am. He says, uh, would you eat them? Uh, here or there, would you eat them anywhere? He says, I would not eat them here nor there. I would not eat them anywhere. He says, would you eat them near or far? Would you eat them with a car? He says, I wouldn't eat them near or far. I wouldn't eat them with a car. I wouldn't eat them here or there. I would not eat them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them. Sam, I am. And Sam continued, here it is, to change his diet while he denied it until his location made him decide to try it. Y'all missed it. Here it is again. Sam I am's whole purpose was to change his diet. But though he denied it, his location made him decide to try it. And uh, and, and uh, when, when I read uh, green, green eggs and ham, I'm, I'm convinced I'm convinced that there's somebody watching me right now. Who, who can be a witness that uh, when, when I think about uh, how how we ought to serve God and how we ought to praise God. Uh, David said it like this. David said uh, that, that I will bless the Lord 
uh, at all times. Yes, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yes, my, my soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The, the humble shall hear it and be glad. But, but when I think of how good God been to me, I got to give God a praise anywhere. Like Dr. Seuss says, will you praise him here or there? Will you praise him anywhere? I dare somebody who's watching now to go on and tell God that God, I will praise you here and there. I will praise you anywhere. Somebody watching ought to be a witness that I will praise him near or far. I'll praise him in a car. I'll praise him here or there. I said I'll praise him anywhere. I dare somebody who's watching right now that can tell your neighbor I got to give God glory no matter where I am. I'll praise him in a house. I'll praise him with a mouse. I'll praise him. Yes. I'll praise him on my knees. I'll praise him in a different key. I'll give God glory. Yes. I say I'll give God praise. I gotta give God praise. I'll praise God on a train. I'll praise God in the rain. I'll praise him with my boss. I'll praise him because of the cross. Because I'm a witness. The reason I praise the name of the Lord. Because they hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head for me. He died. But that's not how yes, the story ends. But three days later, he got up with all power. Power. Wonder working power. Power. Healing power. Is there anybody here? Shoot -a -do 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 -do, that can give God glory and give God praise. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul, soul cries out, hallelujah, I've got to praise him. Is there anybody here who can help me? Won't you help me? Give God glory. Won't you help me? Give God praise. If you know that he's worthy, I said give God, give God the highest praise that you can give in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your darkness. Lift up your hands, lift up your voice, and let everything that has breath praise the name of the Lord. Woo! I to give him glory. I got to give God praise. I got to open my mouth, lift up my hands. Ain't he worthy? Yes, he's worthy to be praised. So let everything that has breath go on, go on, praise him. Come on in your house, praise him. Let everything. Come on and praise him. Come on. Yes. 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 Give God glory. Praise him. Open your mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us, let us exalt his name. Ain't he, ain't he worthy? Ain't he, ain't he worthy? Woo! Woo! I said you ought to praise him. I said you ought to praise him. I said you ought to praise him. Right where you are. Because God prepared me for anything. Problems can happen at any time. But you ought to praise him 
anywhere. Yeah, you, you, you ought to praise him. You ought to praise him even right now. I, I said lift your hands and praise him even right now. I said praise him even right now, right where you are. I said you ought to praise him right where you are. Come on, you ought to just shout praise is what I do even now. I said you ought to shout praise is what I do. Because I owe it all to, to you. Come on, lift your hands even now. Come on, help me sing it. Praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. I'll lift my hands in praise. Come on, praise is who I am. Praise is who I am. I will praise him while I can. I'll bless him at all times. I vow to praise you through the good and the bad. I'll praise you whether happy or sad I'll praise you in all that I go through because praise is what I do cause I I owe it all to Listen, while the Spirit of God is moving even right now, we want to extend the invitation even right now for somebody that doesn't have a relationship with God, somebody that doesn't know Him as their Lord and your Savior. I want you to know that no matter what situation you're in right now, you can praise your way through, but I want you to have a relationship with God. If you don't have a relationship right now, I want you to simply say this prayer. Just say this simple prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I confess that I'm a sinner that needs to be saved by your grace. I believe that you came down through 42 generations just for me. I believe that you, you died on the cross and that you, you rose with all power in your hands. I, I'm believing by faith that you come into my life. My life will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. I want you to praise him even right now. I said praise him even right now. Listen, you can't wait for tomorrow. You got to praise him even right now. If praise is what you do, you ought to do it even right now. Come on, you owe him this praise. You owe him this praise even right now. Come on, you owe it to him even right now. Come on, lift your hands even now. Praise is what I do, do, is what I do. Come on, lift your voice and, and lift up your hands and do it even right now. Say praise is, listen, while you're praising them, while you're praising them, I want you to take this moment to know that it's time to give, time to sow where you are growing. If you have been blessed by this ministry, even right now, I want you to praise God through your giving. There are three ways in which you can give. The first way is through our online website. That is www.stjameseastlake.com. The second way is through mail, 7309 or Porto Avenue, Birmingham, Alabama, 35206. Third ways through Cash App, which is dollar sign St. James E.L. Dollar sign St. James E.L. You can't beat God giving no matter how you try. Now come on, lift up your voice. I said lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. And say praises, yeah. 
Praise is what I do. I do what I do. It's what I do. Come on and give God glory in here. Give God praise. I said, give God praise. Give God praise even right now. And praise him. Because praise is what I do. At this time, we want to encourage you uh, that, that this celebration will continue even today. Watch this. Get ready, get ready, get ready for Pastor Holman's 10th anniversary and 45th birthday celebration on Sunday, September the 27th, beginning at 12 noon with a celebration parade. Join us as we drive through and shower him with gifts. We will climax at 3 p.m. with a virtual anniversary celebration where our guest speaker will be Reverend Harold Bass, pastor of Olivet Monumental Baptist Church. It will be streamed on Facebook Live, YouTube, and www.stjameseastlake.com. See you there. Looking forward to seeing you in a few minutes. Looking forward to seeing you in a few minutes. Make sure that you share this message, though, right now. Share this message. Somebody needs to know that I got to learn how to praise God anywhere. I will not let anybody, anything stop me from praising God. I want you to be prepared for anything. I want you to know that problems will arise at any time. But you got to pray and praise God anywhere. My name is Pastor Richard Holman. I'm looking forward to seeing you this afternoon as well. Three o'clock, the anniversary celebration is going to be lit. So I want you to praise God uh, in advance. At three o'clock, we want you to be right here, right here on all social media, making sure that you join in the celebration. Can't wait to see what God is going to do. In Jesus' name, amen.